Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome to SCV Today, sponsored by 211 Enterprises. I am Tammy Edwards. And I'm Dave Caldwell. We are at Le Chien. This is something I have been looking forward to for such a long time. Le Chien Restaurant up off of Sierra Highway in, uh, Juan, are we in Canyon Country, Agua Dulce? Santa Clarita. Santa Clarita. Santa Clarita. And come on in. Juan Alonzo is the owner. Let's bring Juan in. Yeah, because Tammy has an empty glass, and that's never a good thing. And we all know what Tammy <laughs> wants first thing in the morning, right? Welcome. Thank you, Juan. I'm put Thank a you very much. Red to start the morning right. Absolutely. This is this is a a, a wine that you bottle here. Yes. Why not? We make, we grow, and uh, we drink sometimes. Sometimes, on occasion, I know. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Juan, Alonzo, you're going to join us here in just a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more. But for now, we're going to toast. Santé. Thank you to very health much. And love and money. To health. Thank you. I like that. Uh, Juan's the best. So, well, Le Chien Restaurant, and uh, it is an institution here. He has been here for over 30 years under his ownership. The building has been here, That's good. I think he said 80 years talking. or something. Okay, you just keep drinking. 90 years. It's been here for 90 years. Juan is owned it. I'm still talking. You're still drinking. I'm trying to calculate 90 years and Juan being the owner the whole time. What did you say? When there? Juan, look, let's put it this way. When Juan took over this restaurant, mm -hmm. you were 10. Yeah. Ish. Maybe I should say that. 10-ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was younger, it was, you know, this is the place the parents came and the mm. kids did not. <laughs> You know, it's like, yeah. oh, you can't go. Well, my, my family was called it the Rock House. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah, because the of the architecture yeah. outside, sure. Yeah, it was like, oh, no, you can't go. It's adults only. Wow. Well, that's good for them. That's yeah. a good idea. My family still does that. I Don't want you to have know. you crazy kids running around this incredible French my restaurant? My family still has, still, still has their adult dinners that I'm not allowed to go to. And I can understand why. 41 years old, I'm still not allowed to go to the adult dinners. You're going to be funny? eating at the kids' table out in the kitchen. I like that. I think it's, it's hysterical, I think, but that's all right. Your family knows a thing or two. Yeah. Well, on the show today, in addition to Juan Alonzo, we have Ed Bernstein from 25 Score is going to come here and talk about an institution. And 25 Score has been around a long time, and probably just about everybody watching mm -hmm. us right now has that 25 Score card in their, in their pocket. I do. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere without it. There's so much you can do with that. We also have a group. Guys, I forgot the company. Jim? College Bound Strategies is yeah, with us. Yeah, you always say Jim. You always refer to him as Jim. You never, I've never heard the, the name of the company. I know, that's I true. I always know to call Jim Duncombe. Jim, Jim Duncombe. Duncombe, because you say it all the time, but I've oh, never yeah. heard the actual name of the company. College Bound Strategies. They're going to come on and talk about not only ways to help you pay for college, but also finding the right college. And this is, I don't want to give anything away, but I'm telling you, because you and I both have college age kids. This is a great conversation that we're going to have with these guys. So Chris and Peggy and Jim, all from College Bound Strategies, are going to be Yeah, well, just even our, our pre-interview, if you will, we, we were just, we just go on and on forever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's going to be good, good for our audience to hear. Allie Lepreet from Our Milk Money. Now, this is another fascinating topic. Lepreet or Lepreti? No, she said Lepreet. Lepreet. I said Lepreet. See, I'm thinking French. Yeah. I'm at Le Chien, and I thought Lepreet. But she was quick to identify, no, it's Italian, Loprete. It's Loprete. Lo, lo, lo prete. And every time you say the name, it's got to be the hand. No, you got to have the hand out there. Hey, Ale Loprete. There we go. Very good. But you know what? Now, here's the thing. Now, I, I've always thought of Le Chien Restaurant as one of the most... This is delicious, by the way. Juan's Red. It 2010. is very good. 2010. It is very good. We see that. Le Chien Restaurant to me is, um, uh, yes, it's, it's far out of the way. It is way up Sierra Highway. I mean, you're thinking you're almost in Topeka by the time you get up here. So it's a long ways up here. But It's not that far. It is so worth it to come. I mean, people are coming from Los Angeles and San Diego and Topeka and anywhere else they need to be. Canyon Country, Jim Duncombe. They're all coming from all over the place to come to, to Le Chien. But it is, to me, it's, when you speak, to me, French restaurants are all about romance. Romance. Yes. yes. And so I was thinking, okay, what are the top, you know how I am with my lists. I know how you are with your list, yes. Top 10 romantic things to do. And so you haven't okay. seen my list. I have not seen your list. And so I want to know, here's, uh, is it 10 things? Yeah, there is actually 10 things here. Is Jason, your husband, 
How many of <laughs> Thanks these? Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Well, you know, when we have, you know. Versus Jason, my boyfriend, <laughs> on the side. <laughs> I want to know how many, how romantic Jason is based on the top ten. How many of these he's done? Okay. Okay. Number one on a list, candlelight dinner. And when you're at Le Chien, you does think ki candlelight. Does kissing my chin for looking for my whiskers, does that count as romantic? <laughs> That's on the list. <laughs> Looking for Tammy's whiskers is number eight, right down here. Finding them is number nine. That's yeah. uh, even a better mm -hmm. thing. Okay, candlelight dinner. That's number one on this list. Okay. Red roses. Yes. With a love poem or, oh, or me, kiss. Let me tell you something. Mr. Edwards can write a poem like no other. You gonna bring in a sample? He is, I, I'll, if, if he'll let me, I will. He lit, I ha, literally have a book of, of love letters. Oh, that's awesome, and, and you've kept them all. Oh, absolutely. Good for you. Absolutely. Good no, for he you. Is, I even have, have one frame that I keep next to my bed. He's you have often said on the show, he was your first kiss. Yes, he was. Did he write a poem or did he write you anything after that moment? Then? Yes, back then. Did you still oh, have? Oh, no. I think he broke up with me two days later. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? No. No. He, Were yeah. you, th you that bad of a kisser? I guess so. Jeez. Yeah. All right, number three on the list, flowers and chocolate. Okay, see, this is apparently is separate from the Red Roses, which was number two. Flowers okay. and chocolate. Is he, mm -hmm. is he a flowers and chocolate yeah, kind of guy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? I got flowers last week for my birthday. Okay, number four, and I'm going to say no way has he done this. And if he has, I have a newfound respect for, for Jason Edwards. Handmade gifts. Has he ever made you something? I, can't, I don't think so. Yeah. I think one, you know what? One time, um, oh my gosh, this is, okay. I'm gonna say this was about 13 years ago. And um, I, he'd asked me what I wanted for my birthday or Christmas. And I said, you can go get me a rock out in the yard and I'll be happy. Just the thought. And he actually wrapped up a rock. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's a, kind of a handy kind of, you know. He did not make a rock. He wrapped it. So the answer is no to that no, one. Yeah, the answer no. is going to be no, no with number five no. on this list okay, here, no. too. And, and, you know, feel free if anyone has, if, if you've ever done this before, okay, I want to know. Decorative jar with loving hearts. Again, this is, by the way, this is from loveletterbox.com, all this list. If a man does that, he needs to be giving it to another man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Ed Bernstein, have you ever given a decorative jar with loving hearts? And a boy. Now we know where we're at. That's priorities are. Number six, jewelry. Jewelry that is heart shaped. Has he done that? Heart shaped. Heart shaped jewelry. I don't think heart shaped, but I mean, like. Well, it just says jewelry. I heart don't care shaped. about hearts. I just want bling. Bling. You want? Like these, I got these diamonds from him. Those are nice. Yeah. Very nice. Of course they are. A teddy bear. These were attached to a teddy bear. There you go. So he got Jason's you six and seven. Well. seven. He's doing okay. pretty well. A kiss. Has he given me a kiss? That's, all, that's it. Just top ten romantic things to do, a kiss. This is number eight. Yeah, I have four children. Good. I think I've been kissed. Okay. Love letter and poem. We already talked about that. Mm -hmm. See, the red roses came parenthetically with a love letter or poem. Okay. And then number nine is love letter. Number ten, romantic message in a bottle. See, I, okay, this no. is the one that I don't understand. If, if I'm going to do something romantic, I'm going to put a message in a bottle and do what with it? <laughs> Hand her the bottle, I Hand guess. Hand her the bottle. What? Bathtub. Put it in the bathtub. <laughs> That's a cute idea. Listen There's to you, Daniela. There. There's a thinker over there. Yeah, in the bathtub. It can't be like a little bath, like a, a bathtub with some, some like maybe floating flower petals, some candles, and then the, flo the floating bottle in the water, like as a surprise. Of course now. I'm liking it. What she did said earlier was you put it in a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the so the, there's a message in the bottle, but there's wine in here as well. So now the message is pretty yeah, much messed up. Yeah, just give me the bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Those are top ten. Uh, how did he do? How did he do? Did he get, has he ever given you a, a romantic yeah. message in a bottle? Uh, let, let me tell you, my husband is like the most romantic. I, we always joke because he's kind of the female in the relationship and I'm more of the male. Like he's like the, you know, the uh, constantly. And, and, and I, I like it, dear. But, um, Who wouldn't? I'm... Well, mm, what? I'm not touchy. I'm not. You just do, you do no. You, yes, you are. I'm touchy like when I'm talking to someone like this. Right. But like when like to get in bed at night, like I, I just want my space. I don't get want. Get away I don't, from me. I don't want to be cuddled. I don't. Yeah. 
But you know, these women are always like, oh, you know, snuggle, like, you know, after relations, they want to snuggle and blah, blah, blah. No, give me a plate of nachos and a Dr. Pepper <laughs> and I'm happy. <laughs> After relations, you want nachos and a Dr. Pepper. Yeah, I don't need to like snuggle for an hour and do the whole, you know, I love you, I love you too. I, I, it's just not me. Okay. We're seeing a, a, a little glimpse of Tammy's heart right there. I've got a huge heart. I, just I know, I'm kidding you, I'm kidding you. <laughs> well, when we come back, we are, of course, here at Le Chien Restaurant in Santa Clarita. Well, I'm mixed up point that out and we are going to have the owner Juan Alonzo he's going to talk to us about this incredible place and how he's had over 30 years of success in about as remote a location as you can possibly get so stay tuned. I'm Dan Sturkel general manager for Nissan of Valencia if you like your money as much as the next guy we say hold on to it here at Nissan of Valencia $99 down delivers any new or used vehicle in stock Hard to believe? Here's our disclosure. Blah, blah, blah. Total from you, $99. Oh, and blah, 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 on approved credit. Bankruptcies, foreclosures, late pays, hey, it's all okay here. We have tons of banks vying for your business. Nissan of Valencia, home to the $99 down delivers. Hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm John Dean with Dean Safe Company. For the last four decades, the first 10 people I talk to every morning have just been robbed or burglarized. I'm here to help. We have the largest selection of safes on the West Coast. We carry gun safes, pistol safes, burglary safes, fire safes, safes of all types designed for home and office. We will help you protect your valuables from fire and theft. We offer professional, discreet delivery. See it all on our website or give us a call, deansafe.com. Well, welcome back to SCV Today, and we are coming to you today from Le Chien Restaurant in Santa Clarita. It is the, let's call it Northern Santa Clarita, Northern, Northeastern Santa Clarita. I call it heaven. Yeah, you can do that, <laughs> especially because what is in front of us here right now, and beside us is the man responsible for that, Juan Alonzo, the owner of Le Chien. Thank you very much for inviting us into your home for the last 32 years. It's all my pleasure. This place, we were talking about it during the break. The reviews, mostly great. Of course, there's some not so good, but that's going to be the case with any restaurant. A lot of people have a conception. It is, it is very expensive. The reality is, it is as expensive as any other restaurant. You can spend as much as you want, right? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, we think we are, uh, for what we give, we are not expensive. All right. And there's three main elements to business. Three main rules. Location, location, location. Juan, you violate all three of these out here. And then there's Le Chien. <laughs> And then there's Le Chien. Exactly right. That has not been a problem, though, for you over the years, the location, location, location rule. Well, around us is probably not very many people. Here in Agua Dulce, about 4,000 people living. They could not support us. The restaurant is too big. We have people coming from all walks of life, uh, from far and wide. And they drive to us, even with the, gra the gas crunch. Uh, you know, they seem to find us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really not a far drive. I mean, for a, you know, a hometown girl like me that was born and raised here in Santa Clarita, this is not a far drive at all. Right. For me, I mean, it, it, to me, right. it's, and, and, and it's worth it because I'm going to get escargot. Yes, let's jump right in. And you have, you have specific utensils that so you need to teach us. Let me, let me show you. Yes. If it's your first time, I'm sure it's not. I don't know if I'm going to get a pap smear I'm or gonna... an escargot with this thing. <laughs> Here it is. You know what? My appetite has suddenly changed dramatically. Thank you for that. You, you, were you thinking wow. the same thing? See, wow. all the ladies were thinking wow. the same thing. Can we just focus on this and this delicacy, please? And here it is. You, okay. you just grab it like this. Sometimes you have to be careful because it jumps off. And then with the fork, you... It jumps uh, off. You take it out? I'll feed you, Dave. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm ready for this one. And the mm. best is to go and to... Uh, mm to deep, mm. deep the, the bread in the, in the butter. Garlic and butter. Garlic, butter, and herbs, mm. you know. Oh my gosh, watch this, watch this. Mm. That's so good. Now I'm gonna give you a secret, because Tammy has been looking forward to this and specifically requested mm -hmm. this escargot. Mm. And so I wanted that moment to be captured. That's so good, oh my God. I have to, I have to work this now. Yeah. Now, continue on though, because you- amazing. You've been you've been here for the 32 years. We've been well, right. September September 8th will be 32 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, to open Le Chien here was never a conscious thought. I used to say, I came to the valley and I was selling real estate, 
I'm a chef by trade, but selling real estate, and uh, one day the lady who owned the building says, Juan, would you like to have it? And that was the beginning of, uh, of mm -hmm. this affair 32 years later. And you, you originate from Spain? I was born in Spain, grew up in France, uh, uh, spent uh, about three years in Switzerland, and I've been here since 1973. And you learned the art of being a French chef in France? In France. I, when I was uh, 14, I got, got tired of going to school. I didn't care much for it. And so I went to work as an apprentice in a one-star and a Michelin guide uh, hotel and restaurant. And here I am today. Here you are today. It was hard work, but uh, it, it, it taught me something, you know. You're just going to continue to eat, aren't you? It's all that matters. You, you don't care about learning about Juan Alonso or Le Chien. You just want to put that food in your face. No, I've never, I've never, actually, I, mean, I don't think I've ever had the escargot here. This is hands down the best I have ever had. And this is so good. And you're going for thirds. I want to point that out. You don't normally do that. So what does that tell you? It's that good. It's, it's okay. Great. There's one more, so it's be 50-50. There's a lot of people around here looking awfully hungry. And they're thinking, why is he getting into thirds? Yeah, well, too bad for you. Well, okay? like, you like you pointed out, Juan, the, 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 the best part is then to take your bread and dip it into this, this butter and garlic and herbs here. It's all over. Oh, that. yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And when you say they are the best, you know the first one saying that. We kind of mm. treat them with love and we uh, uh, talk, don't talk to them because, but we treat them with love and lots of spices. You know, earlier, Juan, when we got here, you and I were talking in the kitchen, and you said you've been doing this now for 47 years. 47 years. Started when I was 14, and I'm 39 now. Exactly. So that's the, that's the Spanish math, I guess, yes. right? Okay, yes. I understand that. Yes. I didn't go to school very long, so I haven't <laughs> gone that far. But thankfully, you went to your French chef education. You yes. did that all the way through, Yes, I can make escargots. There's a passion that you have for food. And sometimes, yeah, it wanes, just like passions with anything else. But... You absolutely have a passion for the food that you prepare. It's not just a passion for food, yes. It's a passion for food, but it's also a passion to make people happy, to, to have when people leave, they are content, they're going to tell their friends. It's, 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 it's a relation with the food and also with people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, all, it's all not just, just the food. Just, you, know, you go to somebody's house, if they invite you to eat or would they give you something, is, is from the heart, you know, and so we like to do that. That's why we've been here in the middle of nowhere for 32 years. <laughs> <laughs> and when I have a question, every time that I have, have visited the Shen, um, it's been dark. And this is my first time I've been here with light out. And you've got beautiful gardens outside. Mm. Do, you, do you open that up for receptions, weddings? See, when, when we build this, we build it looking in, not looking out. So it, driving by the road, you never see what's, what's inside. And so yes, we do banquets, we do weddings, we do all kinds of functions, and we use the garden for that. It's absolutely beautiful. Or just to stroll with a glass of wine or a, or a cocktail. Well, and we can even see it, just looking on the background, I mean, you would think that you're in New York or someplace back east with the lush green and, and, the, and, and I sense mm -hmm. almost the, the, with the trees and the forest, it's almost behind us. And yet, as you said, driving here, you're coming through a lot of brown, a lot of desert area. This is, like you said, an oasis, a, a beautiful place Far away, but absolutely worth the drive. It's for anybody. You could, you could live in the Valley or Los Angeles or whatever, Pasadena, and people come from those places. It is like a trip out of town, like a Sunday brunch or take a, a, an evening for dinner since we only open for dinner. But it is like a trip. It's, you're not going into some mall you know, in, a, in a store. I think Le Chien has been many years, many things has been here many, many, many years, but it has some aura, you know, somewhere where if you bring somebody here, they'll remember. Well, we are going to remember this, I think, for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And the, the beautiful part about this is that we're going to have more food coming out. You're going to continue yes. to bring some things out. Yes. Our guests uh, who are surrounding us right now, who are going to be on the show, are very excited about that. Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> so, Juan, thank you very much for being, thank allowing you. us to come into your home and do this. My pleasure. And uh, please let the show go on. We will. He's going to be off to go do that. <laughs> We're going, to be take, we're going to take a quick break. Ed Bernstein from 25 Score is going to be on the program next, so stay tuned. Escape reality at the Ivy Day Spa in Valencia. Relax your mind in our tranquil solarium. Unwind during your VIP massage. 
rejuvenate with advanced diamond tip microdermabrasion or choose from a variety of facial treatments. For a unique spa experience, visit the grotto where you'll enjoy a full body exfoliating scrub in an exotic setting. Schedule your escape today and receive a 50% discount on a VIP grotto experience with your next full service treatment at the Ivy Day Spa in Valencia. today. Well, along with the bottle of wine, which I take everywhere with me, <laughs> there's something else that never leaves my wallet, and that is my 25 scorecard. So, Absolutely. I'm done. Ed Bernstein. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, done. <laughs> and when we come back, no, I've succeeded. No. <laughs> Everyone's carrying a card in their wallet. I can go home now. Well, it's true, though, and, and you know that. I, I use my 25 scorecard everywhere I go. So welcome to the show, Ed Bernstein, and thank you for bringing such a fabulous program to the Santa Cruz Valley. Thank you. I would like to take credit for it from the beginning, but I can't. I, I kind of reinvented 25 score in 2009. It's been here since 1989. The original owner ran it for 17 years. I'm sure he was really tired of sticking stickers on windows all mm -hmm. over town, and uh, he's a good friend of mine now. And uh, 25 Score is a great institution. I think every city should have something, and a lot of cities do have something that does a buy local. It benefits the local merchants, it benefits the local schools, and it benefits the, the, the members at large. And um, we recently changed everything to be accessible from any kind of device. And the cards are only $25. You can, uh, the average family or average two people that are married can save anywhere from $250 to $700 a year with a $25 investment. Wow. And they usually go to five places they go to all the time to justify buying it. And our goal is to get them to try 25 places a year to buy it. 25 is the key, uh, the yeah, key number here in all this, number, isn't it? You know, it's a key, a key it's my thing. son's baseball number. Let me ask you another question. <laughs> what it, how many people now are part have, of 25 you know, It's hard to tell because people are coming on and off. It's between 30 and 40,000 cards in circulation at any one time. We recently expanded to Antelope Valley, so our 700 merchants here and 240 up there bring us close to 1,000 merchants that are honoring it. Um, so the 30 to 40,000 people that, that mm -hmm. are going to be holding the card, that's just in Santa Clarita? That's just Santa Clarita. So it's a big oh. chunk. And we're 175,000 people in, and we count Stevenson's Ranch on the L.A. side. It comes about 270. So it's a good chunk of the population, and they're very loyal. They've had them for years and years and mm -hmm. years. Sometimes they don't get them after school, so we're trying to get them to renew when they leave college. And College of Canyon does about 10,000 cards a year. The high schools do about 10, and we do about 20 direct. Right, and, and the reason why you're with the schools is that it's actually a fundraiser for Oh, the it's schools. huge. They probably make more money off the cards than I do, I mean, for the whole year, mm -hmm. because they're, they're basically getting majority of the profit. The parents are getting the benefit of having the card, and the, the, the students, in some cases, are doing it for fundraising for band and stuff, so they're raising it. But it's a big chunk of money, more than anybody ever makes off candy or wrapping paper or anything else. And it doesn't have to be sold because most of them know what it is and would rather buy it through the school. So it's a win-win. And my big thing is I don't have to mail it. I mean, they're handing it to them, so it costs me money right. to mail stuff. Right. So it's, it's a good thing for everybody. Most of the merchants that are part of the 25 score, mm -hmm. restaurants, are they? 170 uh, restaurants, 300 service places, about 200 retail establishments. I think it comes up the right numbers. Mm -hmm. But uh, if they want to check it, everything is like so transparent. If you go to our website and click dining, up comes a map. If somebody yesterday says, I break thee and don't want to be on it anymore, mm -hmm. and we take them down, it then goes to 169 restaurants. So we added five yesterday. So it will go up and down depending on who's renewing their contract. Most of them renew. This year we may have some attrition because we're actually charging all the merchants for two scorecards and their listing on the site. A big investment was made. We don't want people just being a merchant because they want two free cards. We want them mm -hmm. to be vested like us and have a compelling reason to use it when they get it rather than put it in their nightstand. Right, so now when someone uh, gets a card, they can, I want to explain for those that haven't had a 25 mm -hmm. score card why it's so beneficial and how it works and it's so easy to work. Um, so you get your card, you can go online and see all participating restaurants, vendors, right. whoever it m may be. And um, is there a booklet that comes out with it as well? I know you used to Up until now, we had not printed a booklet since 2006. Okay. It's been all online. Um, starting August this month, the beginning of August, we're printing 30,000 directories, which will have a list. So if anybody who wants to be a merchant, they should get involved now so they can be in print for the whole year. It's not as critical because about 50% of our traffic now is coming from mobile devices. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that will go to 70% because you're sitting out at a restaurant where you're at a car place and you're looking for a place you can get a sandwich. You can hit dining and everyone nearby will 
will come up and show their discount. We never had that before, and most people are using their mobile devices to find everything. Mm -hmm. But the print is good because a lot of us are off the grid. There's a lot of people who aren't on Facebook. They don't get emails. And they look at stickers on the windows, but they don't drive around looking for stickers. So a good place to put that is at the colleges and the high schools where people have a card, want to know where to use it. So we are printing a catalog. I didn't want to do it because it wasn't very green, but at least I'm giving it to people that may not throw it away. Right. You, are, you, are you thinking that by having something tangible that people can hold on to, that's going to prompt them to go use those merchant services more? I think so more. And then we have stickers we put on the credit card. So when you go to a restaurant that hasn't put their sticker up yet or decided that they want to sneak and not do it, they see the sticker on the credit card, oh, you have a scorecard, can I see it, please? And that increased the number of places you use it, too, because if you look at the list before you buy the card, you go, oh, my God, there's like 30 places I go to all the time that I would go to more often if I had a better a discount with it. Mm -hmm. The big benefit to the merchants is this. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on trying to build traffic. If you don't do a Groupon thing at your place and you're a restaurant and you're the guy next door, your sales go down for that month when they sold 1,000 sandwiches, and now you can't pay your rent. Ours is a 10 to 15% off. They're not going after blood because they get a discount everywhere. The car wash, the dry cleaner, the food, movie tickets, Disneyland, you know, Pantages. All these places are offering a discount. So 10% is plenty because you're saving everywhere you go. Mm. And the merchant can afford to absorb a 10% discount. Now that they're used to a 75% off, we look like we're amazing. You know, right. We can bring people in. Right. right. Uh, we have a lot of other programs we added since uh, uh, we bring... Uh, people to restaurants at 2 in the afternoon on their slowest day. And it's not a okay. discount thing. They actually pay $15 a person to go. But it's great to meet new people in the community. It's 2 in the afternoon, so it's mostly business people. It allows the restaurants to be introduced to 40 new people. Most of the restaurants we did were 30-year-old, like this restaurant here. Mm -hmm. There are people in Santa Cruz who've never set foot in here. If I have a lunch mob here, chances are 35 of them have never set foot in Le Chien. Mm. So the idea is how do you get 30 people to show up at your restaurant in one hour period? And now, do it on your slowest day and slowest hour. Some of them weren't even open, and we filled the restaurant with 40 people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're doing some good with, it. my feeling is that the emails are good, the uh, publication's good, but meeting people that can help push your brand forward is the biggest thing you can do, because it could be a $5 transaction or a million dollar transaction, meeting someone who falls in love with your idea. And they usually don't fall in love through an email. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a lot of interactive stuff. Ed Bernstein, thank you very much for joining us, mm -hmm. as always, coming to uh, here from Le Chien Restaurant. And, of course, if you want more information about 25Score or anything, that ha any of our guests, when they're on the program, go to scvtoday.com. We'll be able to get the information about Ed's website as well and all the information about 25Score, scvtoday.com. When we come back... Okay. All right. I like your list. I know you do. Stay tuned. An old knee injury used to keep me from enjoying the things I love most. Dr. Barraza has completely changed my life. I never thought going to a chiropractor could make me pitch better, but it has. It's kind of my little secret. What I do has proven to increase your quality of life naturally, without any drugs or surgery. Vertical Wellness, where your health and well-being is my business. Yeah, me. I do. I've had to keep it hidden here, but uh, I know, Dave, you're loving the list. It's well, almost I, as if you've just discovered the world wide well, no, web. Well, no, it's yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's go to the Google machine and see what we can find I today. Can Google anything? I know exactly. Yeah. What can I look? What I can find? Well, but I do this because I know we're getting great response from it. You, you like it? I do like it. It's and fun. Now I've got one here. Now, by the way, we're coming from you, coming to you. Am I getting this right? We're at Le Chien Restaurant in Santa Clarita, up off Sierra Highway, North Santa Clarita, to be clear. Great experience here today, great people. Juan Alonzo, his lovely wife as well, is here. So we're having a great experience, and we obviously want to invite you to come out to Le Chien Restaurant when you can. Now, we're talking about, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, let me preface this. Okay. Uh, this was on Mark and Brian this okay. morning. I heard this on Mark and Brian. It was so funny, though. I, had to, I, I just had to go find it, print it off myself, because I wanted to share it with you, okay. Okay? okay? This is from a magazine called Housekeeping Monthly, and I want all the ladies to chime in on this. That includes Austin. <laughs> but I want all the ladies to chime Whoa. in on this. I, I guess the camera will be on me for the I rest think so. of the show. I, I think I'm going to look terrible from now on. <laughs> yeah. 
This is from a, a publication called Housekeeping Monthly. Okay. Housekeeping Monthly, so keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. From May 13th, 1955. Okay. Okay? This is called The Good Wife's Guide. Okay. Okay, so there's Adams. It's not in any particular order. Okay, so this is just something that the magazine published. So this is, these are things that a wife should do for her husband. Okay. In, Have, in 1955. Uh, yeah. Okay. In, yeah. Have dinner ready. <laughs> Plan ahead, even the night before, to have a delicious meal ready <laughs> on time for his return. Jared's all over that one. Absolutely. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why is that what? Well, you don't do that? Uh, no. You don't do that for Jared? I mean, for Jason. <laughs> you don't do that for Jared. <laughs> you don't do that for Jason? How about when, this? When I wasn't working, I, I, I love to cook. I love to cook, but I mean, there's no, there's no cooking now. And then we got sports, and nah, no. There's no cooking now. It's, it's McDonald's. So what you're saying is Jason's life is a living hell right now because of that. Is that what it is? He's ready to me. He's in heaven. <laughs> the second item on here, prepare yourself. This is before your, your husband returns from work. Okay. During the day. Prepare yourself, ladies. Take 15 minutes to rest so you'll be refreshed when he arrives. Touch up your makeup. <laughs> Put a ribbon in your hair and be fresh looking. <laughs> he has just been with a lot of work weary people. Oh dear God, I'm, this is why I was born in 71. The next one on the list, and again, this is not in any particular order, this is just, okay. be a little gay. <laughs> 1955. Uh -huh. Gay. I know. Happy. And a little more interesting for him. His boring day may, may need a lift, and one of your duties <laughs> is to provide it. <laughs> okay. Why do you keep laughing? This is so funny. Okay. Number four, clear away the clutter. Make one last trip through the main part of the house just before your husband arrives. Run a dust cloth over the tables. Okay. This, see, all the guys in the I room right now are sitting there going, absolutely, there is nothing wrong with this list. I disagree. John, mm -hmm. you are just, you are, you're a boy, oh boy. I'm with the here's a, here's the thing, Dave. Back in, in 1955, the woman's role at home was completely different than the woman's role at home now. Back then, you didn't have all of these activities. I mean, my grandmother had six children, but when I had, had two children, she said to me, you do more with your two children than I had to do with six. It's, it, there, there's so, and I think that was a stretch, but by the time I had four, definitely. Just patting you on the back. It's not patting back. me on the back. Yeah. Don't be condescending. I'm not gonna, no, I'm not. It's I'm not, not, no, it's I'm not trying to be. What I'm saying is that it's, it was different. She didn't have to run them to, to five different practices, and, and then the, it's like so keeping up with everything, piano and this private lesson and that, and it's different. I'm just saying. It's I'm just, totally I'm, different. I'm just, I'm just reading what was here. From 1950. Okay, all right. But, but what I'm saying, I can understand if I was the 1955 housewife, I probably would go along with all that and do all that. Would you Would you still do it today? Is there any of this that you would go? If I had the I would lifestyle of a woman in 1955, absolutely. I would have the, the house clean, the food on the table. That's fair. Bow in my hair. How about this? Would you minimize all noise? At the time of his arrival, eliminate all noise of the washer dryer or vacuum? I, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I minimize noise for Jason because he, he studies, he, he's taking classes and, mm -hmm. and I'll be, everyone quiet, everyone be quiet, he's taking, he's studying. Encourage the children to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Be, I always encourage them to be quiet. Oh, be happy wrong. to see him. Again, I think, I think there's something really, really uh, key to all this. I'm going to skip ahead here because, um, let me see if I can find it. A good wife always knows her place. Uh, uh, yeah. And yeah? I, I, and, and vice versa. What's the husband's place? It depends on the situation. Now, but obviously in 1955, his, he was a king. I mean, this list is basically saying in 1955, in the family structure, the man was a king and, and a woman was subordinate to him, mm -hmm. right? Because I, it was I think that if you want a happy marriage, that you still you still need to let a man be a man. You have to let him be the man. And there's a lot because you know me, I'm very dominant. And with Jason, I'll have to find myself going, okay, in my head, hold back, Tammy, slow down. You're you're, you're going too far here. Yeah. Let him take control. Let him handle it. You know. And and I think that's you know, we're we're not the same. So I mean, people, 
Someone say, we're the same. No, we're not. We're not the same. We're, we're built different. Mm. I'll go through it real quick. There's a couple more in here, okay, and just to go through it, because okay. I want to I say them because I know we're running out of time. Uh, listen to him. You may have a dozen important things to tell him, but the moment of his arrival is not the time. And you know what? Actually, I think that's true. Mm -hmm. But that's true even when, right. when the man comes home. And, and it's, not, it's not his time to just dump all of his problems right. for you just to dutifully listen. See, now I think you thought that I was going to find this list appalling. Uh, no, I think it's kind of funny. That's why I wanted to put it out there. And I was just curious about your reaction. I, yeah, see, no, no, your no, reaction because, doesn't surprise me. Because I, I, I'm sitting here thinking that you know, this isn't all that bad. Yeah. I mean, I think that I think we've lost track of catering to the ones we love. Amen. Male or, male or woman. That's, and a, you have that's to it right cater. there. Yeah, yeah. You have to cater. And, and there's a lot of times where I really have to remind myself that, that you know, this is the man that, that loves me and cares for me. And I mean, my God, I mean, was there for me during cancer and did everything for me. Give the man a little praise. And that's just kind of how I feel. I'm, I've said it a million times, I'm going to say it again, and I'll say it a million more times after this. My mom and dad were married for over 60 years, and they had it, my mom said that they had it right, and this is what it was. Moms, my mom's world revolved around my dad, mm -hmm. and my dad's world revolved around my mom. And mm -hmm. all of these things apply to exactly what you just said, mm -hmm. applies to exactly what she said, it applies to what, what I would say as well, because I think that it's the same thing for a man now. Mm -hmm. Don't greet him with complaints and problems. Don't greet her with complaints and problems. It's the same thing. Right. It's the same thing. Right. And I think people lose track of that because I think people are so, and it's my world and I can do what I want. And that's, it's not necessarily so. Because when you make it through those tough times, you will get back to a good time, and then it's worth it. Then you look back and go, wow, we made it. Right. Now, of course. Now, if there's abuse and things, I'm not condoning that. That You, you hightail it right. out of there. Exactly. You know, but... I kind of like that. That's a good one. Well, I mean, that was, wives. it was, it's called the Good Wives Guide, but I mean, that was from 1955, but it applies. It could be the Good Spouses Guide now. I, that's what I was going to say. It can absolutely be the Good yeah. Spouse. It could be the Good Better Half Guide, whether, yeah. whether you're married you or not. Know, you know I work late nights a lot, right. and Jason will call and like, you know, I'll take care of dinner, what, you know. It goes, it goes both ways. He's not sitting there going, where are you? Yeah, no. He's saying, <laughs> I'm just letting you know what's going on. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, no, Tell that would me, be where are you? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Click. <laughs> <laughs> he knows better. He knows better. When we come back on the program, we're going to have the, our guest from College Bound Strategies. Tammy and I both parents of college-age kids, so there's a lot to talk about, so make certain you stay tuned. The Donut Inn on Soledad Canyon Road has a new name, California Bakery and Cafe. You still get the donuts, hot chocolate and fresh squeezed juices, the sandwiches, croissants and our famous tamales. But you'll also get cakes for parties, celebrations and major events. Our unique bread baskets offer a one of a kind gift, all with the personal service you have come to expect for the last 35 years. Get a cup of coffee and a Danish 24 hours a day. California Bakery and Cafe. Well, welcome back to SCV Today. We're coming to you today from Le Chien Restaurant. I'm having to make certain that uh, this is still Juan's Red, Juan's right? Red. Yes, it's yeah. still Juan's Red from 2010 that we're all, we've all been drinking and sampling and enjoying. And I think Juan's going to be coming out here in just a second anyway with, uh, with some more. But for Tammy and I, we both have kids who are in college. I have one. You now have two college-age kids. Right. I should make it that point because Dylan's on his way to the Navy. Yes, he is. He's going to be joining the Navy, so good for him. But there's always a, is a huge topic anymore. If you are a family, you have children, college becomes a big deal. And so we have the group from College Bound Strategies joining us. Chris Tolls, the self-professed Christian Gray, uh, inspiration, Jim Duncombe, and, and Peggy Stabil is joining us. And Juan is bringing oh my goodness. soup now. And Juan? Onion soup, onion soup and, and frog legs. Oh, and frog legs to sample. You got the, why did you get the onion soup in front of you? Because Don't you it, want the frog legs? Because I heard that frog legs were my favorite animals. Yeah, <laughs> frog legs are not an animal, but the frog is. They could be a pet. <laughs> you had pets. Let's talk college-bound strategies. Have to work around this one. And I know that uh, we, can go, we can spend a lot of time. We were talking about that before the show started, that we could spend a lot of time okay. talking with you guys. But you guys obviously have a lot of experience 
in working with kids trying to get to school. And one of the key words, and let's start with this, Jim, thrive. One of the goals is to find a place for a student to thrive. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And then one of the issues about getting kids to college really is choosing the right environment where they're going to get there, get an education, get out in four years, which only 38% of the kids do today. So it's kind of a, a really low number. But get them to choose the right environment where they're going to get the right education for them, an environment that they'll enjoy, enjoying the college experience, and where they're going to thrive and get through this whole process. On the flip side of it, what then we always hear a lot of, well, how can a parent afford it? And that's really where we work in our organization, is our organization is broken into really three different sections. I handle the financial planning, help them organize finances to maximize financial aid. Chris handles all the FAFSA stuff, so they get through the form process and understand those. And some schools require a higher level CSS form. And Peggy's organization handles all of the counseling. So she's actually the one that does the meeting with the students, and her organization is really about helping that student choose the right environment and position himself for that school. You know, right <clears throat> off the bat, what, what I love about this is with, with Lindsay, my oldest, and she's just going to be so happy that I'm sharing this story. Um, she, she was looking at, at U of A and ASU. She'd been accepted at both. And I wanted her to choose ASU because I felt she would thrive more there. She wanted to go to U of A and she chose U of A, which ended up not being the right school for her. But what I love about this is because it takes mom and dad out of the equation. And then for you, Peggy, to yes. sit there and speak one on one, that, they'll, that that's your profession and they'll respect that and that's what they'll listen to. And I think that is so important because had you been sitting there with Lindsay and said, Lindsay, look it. U of A, you're a little f further out there. Mm -hmm. ASU, this is why it's better for you. I think that would have worked. And do you find that that happens often where you have to say to the parents, take a step back, let me take care of this? Let me handle yes, it? the parents have been very, very generous with allowing me to deal with their students, though. Um, what we do go through is an extensive process of profiling the students academically as far as their activities are concerned and then doing quite a bit of uh, testing and assessing as far as possible careers and majors would be concerned. And from there we put together an option sheet of different colleges that would be appropriate for all of the needs and desires of the student. And of course then we have meetings with the folks who have input as well. From there, the kids begin their research on the colleges, and they have to be on those websites looking up various things that would appeal to them about the college. And uh, the parents are feeling really comfortable at this point because the students are, are actually involved very much in the process. And this is the thing that I love about your organization because you guys go beyond just the financial side of mm -hmm. trying to figure out a way to pay for it. What you're actually doing is you're wanting to start working with the kids before they're well out of high school. I'm assuming probably even sophomore, junior years exactly. of high school, yes. so that then you can start thinking about what's going to be the best school for you. And that's that, I think, is a, is a big key element that really sets you mm -hmm. guys apart, isn't it? I believe so, yes. And we have quite a bit of face time with the students. I meet with them at least 20 times in the entire process, as well as doing wow, a, lot of, a, lot. a lot of time. And then a lot of work online with them as far as their essays are concerned, helping them to uh, brainstorm mm -hmm. and proofread the essays and edit the essays out for mm -hmm. them. So, mm -hmm. and, then, yeah. and then there is the, the paperwork aspect as far as the FAFSA and all that. You know, yeah. especially when you have parents like myself who did not go to college, and I don't understand any of the process whatsoever, and, and it was kind of the blind leading the blind with, with my children. So you're able to get in there and say, let me take care of this for you, let me show you how it's done? We're, we'll be the expert on that. We'll, we'll walk you through that. But even more importantly than completing the FAFSA, it, it's a form, and it's, I've done hundreds of them, so there, it's really not that complicated of a form. But the real work goes in ahead of time. It's making, it's knowing what the form, or what, uh, where to position assets and how to put them in the right places on the form. Mm. And even prior to getting there, how do you position your assets so that it puts you in the most favorable light relative to financial aid? Kind of like Mitt Romney's done with his taxes, and that's why. Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go. And he's coming from the yeah. Republican. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just and, listening to it. And come on, they all do it. And we have, we have. We will do everything that we can to position you properly. What we don't do is anything that's not ethical or not moral. Right. Correct. But we'll, t we'll give you every advantage. Not implying that Mitt Romney was unethical. He was just strategic. Yeah. <laughs> FAFSA, by the way, and so, so everyone knows, FAFSA, federal, give, give me the whole. free application, free application for federal student aid. Exactly. And this is something that if anyone is going to be having a student in college. That's where it starts. It really is. And, 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 I, and I, this is something that almost caught me off guard, and I was fortunate that I found out about it ahead of time. 
if you have a senior in high school and they're going to be going to college in the fall, the deadline for the FAFSA that has to be filed is, Jan is January 31st, right? Well, the, fa the FAFSA gen usually historically becomes available in the middle of the month, about the 15th or so. Of January. Of January. Uh, different schools will have different deadlines. Federally, the deadline is, can go all the way out to September. But you, if you're looking for financial aid, you need to get that information to the schools in a timely manner so that they can have what they need in order to make an exactly. offer to you. So that's the importance of getting it done ahead of time. When we work with the kids, we, we do schedule that to be done in the month of January. Exactly. And, and Jim, I know that financing and, and a lot of people, that's a big, big deal with the cost of college going up to, I mean, private schools anymore, I know, mm -hmm. fifty to $60,000 a year anymore, that is becoming a really big deal. Are you looking for ways to get free money to them, or are you just looking for what's going to be the right way to, to help parents or the student finance that education? All of the above. I mean, the bigger issue is most people think, and they all think of free aid, right, from the government. And the reality is, unless you're really low income, you're not going to get a lot of aid. So you're looking at merit scholarships from the private schools, and you're looking at positioning those, those students into those schools that the best fit for them. The state schools aren't going to give you a lot. We're already subsidizing the state schools. And you're not seeing a lot of those students get money because they don't apply, they, they don't qualify financially. But then the real savings, frankly, that we see is getting in school, getting done in four years. Mm -hmm. right, so if you're paying $50,000 a year and your kid now needs to go an extra semester, you've now spent another $25,000. Right? So there's a big savings of getting him into the right school and the right program. That's the most key to it. Then the other thing is the merit. Merit is the second bi biggest piece. And everybody's out there looking for these free scholarships. We call them the animals groups, the elks, the, the moose, the eagles, whomever else is out there right. that have these scholarships and they're great to do that. But that's only 4%. Right. The big money is on the merit side and actually what the schools are going to willing to give them. And then, of course, the financial aid package you put together. A lot of people make the mistake, too, if they make a lot of money saying, I don't need to complete the FAFSA. Mm -hmm. That's wrong because the FAFSA triggers everything, including merit, including loans, including everything that you might qualify for at the school. So they got to make sure they do complete that. And like Chris said, it's the work up front that counts. It's completing the form is just completing the form. You really want to make sure assets are, are, are positioned right. There's a lot of things that count and don't count, and that's really where we work with them on. Mm -hmm. So how are the frog legs? I haven't tried them yet. <laughs> I just tried them. almost gone. Yeah. Did you need silverware? No. Did you, no, we're, we're good. Did you, did you need to try some of mine, Tammy? No, Edwards? but I, I'm in Kermit the Frog is not uh, <laughs> going to go anywhere for a while. She's the soup over there to herself. She is. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've got a problem, Dave. It mine's so still in the cook to know. <laughs> it's still moving around. Still more. <laughs> well, Christian, Ge Christian Gray, uh, we're having fun with you. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for joining us. This is welcome. such a big issue, and it is something that always sneaks up on it. And by the way, a fun little thing. You could have been Tammy's counselor when you were at Hart High School. I could have been. How but, things could have changed. But I told you, Mrs. Stabile was the one that everybody wanted. It was oh. like, did you get Mrs. Stabile? Yeah. So that, that's, you know, that's saying something of teenage kids like you. Well, thank you, you so much for passing woman. that on. I really appreciate <laughs> it. And I love what I'm doing with the kids even today. Very so, good. Great. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. Well, when we come back, Ale, and I've got to do this right, Ale Loprete. Yes. <laughs> from our milk money is gonna Ale lo prete. I'm gonna keep on doing that as we go out. Eat your spoon your soup. Oh, Shut up. Dave. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back to the program. We're in the midst of Le Chien restaurant, as we can see. We have got so much great food coming on. Juan Alonzo, the owner of Le Chien, making us live the good life. Even if we don't want to, we're going to be when we're here at Le Chien restaurant. And we're joined by, and I, oh, it's, it's speaking to you here, Juan. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to say this. I'm going to introduce her this way. Ale, you're over there. I can't see you. Ale Loprete right is here. There she is from right. our milk money. 
OurMilkMoney.com, yes. that's right. OurMilkMoney.com. And this is a very unique experience. Now, you are often confused with someone who is trying to, and by the way, welcome from behind the microphone from your radio show. Oh, now, thank you. Now everyone can see what you look like, yeah. and you're beautiful. Yeah. So you're uh, <laughs> one of those that uh, your face was made for television, not radio. Well, that's so nice of you. I know I've gotten very comfortable in my pajamas and no makeup <laughs> behind the radio. The radio and, station. and a glass of wine will point out. Oh, well, you know, I do have wine <laughs> while I'm on my radio show. Yeah. <laughs> I originally started doing it because my nerves were so, you know, with my very first show, everyone said, you need to calm yourself. You were talking a little bit fast, and wine actually helped. And so I'm no stranger to the bottle here when I'm in front of the camera. Well, tell us about Our Milk Money. This is an organization that you created because you want to provide, thank you, Juan, thank very you, Juan. much. You want to provide support for those people who wish to have at least one parent stay at home. Yes and be able to be with the children. That's exactly right. There are so many of us that really thought that we were going to go in one direction when we had children, and, and especially women. We've worked so hard for generations to climb corporate ladders, to, uh, to really make something of ourselves, to prove that we're equal to men, that we can be paid the same way. But unfortunately, what, that is ha what has happened is we ended up having children, and we realized that what we really wanted deep down was to just be there for our kids and mm -hmm. to stay with them. And it was mm -hmm. very difficult watching somebody else raise them. At least that's what happened for me. Mm -hmm. And so I went on a search uh, nationwide looking for other moms that felt the same way that I did. And I found such a need for this. And uh, at the time, I was making jewelry. And I was trying to price a necklace. And I thought, um, I don't know, maybe you can buy my necklace for $35 in a department store. And then I started dreaming of $35 and what it would do for me and my family and how oh. that would afford me uh, you know, an opportunity to stay home with my son. Uh, it would it was the cost of a tank of gas, a, a mommy and me class, what I could do with $35. And I realized that if somebody could see the value in my necklace versus a department store, that maybe they would choose to use their consumer power to purchase my product. And so I, I wanted to put my money where my mouth was, and I started looking for parents that were selling everything I was spending my money on. And I, everything, shampoo, <laughs> cosmetics, sure. everything that I was already spending my money on. And I couldn't find them. And so that's when I realized, as women do, we're so resourceful, we decide to create something that uh, is there, where there's a need, we fill a void, you know. And so uh, that's when I created Our Milk Money, which is a business directory of self-employed parents. And we all sort of pass our money back and forth and buy from each other as much as possible. And that affords us the choice to stay at home. Brilliant idea. Yeah, that, that's so awesome. And you know, something that I, I think people are finally getting now, and uh, Peggy, you can chime in on this one, Peggy, the high school counselor, <laughs> is that um, having been a high school counselor for many years, um, parents, I always hear them say, oh, I want to stay home while the children are young. And then once they start school, I'll go to work. Mm -hmm. Well, I have always said mm. that is the worst time to, to not be there mm. with your children. You need to be there, especially, see Peggy totally uh -huh. agrees with me. From, from age 12, when they hit that junior high school age, through high school, mm -hmm. that's when you need to be there. And that is the perfect time to work from home because they're also at an age where they're not going to be, you know, playing Barney in the background or, right. or doing any of that. So do you, are you finding an increase in parents that with older children coming to you looking for guidance or? Yes. Um, what I'm finding is that, you know, I originally started with young children. My children are still fairly young at three and six. But I am finding that even though they're more independent and I can actually get a little bit more done at work, that I'm definitely needed in the home. They need me to, to help them with their homework. Right. They need me to be there when they've come home and they've been a little bit bullied or... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's so many different activities that are that are happening, and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that it's if, if you don't have the choice, if you don't have the choice and you have to work outside the home, that is one thing. But the whole idea of OurMilkMoney.com was to afford people the choice so that right. you can come home. Uh, there's there's no excuse anymore. If you really do think that you're better, your time is better spent with your children and your family, this is going to give you the opportunity to do that. Now, I want to hear a little, I'm sorry, Dave. Mm. We, we always do this. We try to talk over each other. Well, we both have things. You're like, oh, I want to, I want to. I do need that butter, though, if you can pass it to me, please. The <laughs> heck, it's over here. <laughs> give him something to do, right? No, you're, t you're talking. I'm doing something you're that's, really not gonna that's very, excuse get, my wait, get back off, back off, girl. Um, I'll get it there. <laughs> Isn't it delicious? Get, Unbelievable. Do you, do you need I some butter, Allie? No, I haven't you even sure? tried. I just tried the steak. I haven't even tried I'm the lobster. Knock them out. You want I'm some butter? Knock them out yeah, right I'll try some butter. Yeah, go ahead and try some butter. You may All want right. to cut. Take your time cutting that. 
Because I know that uh, no one else wants the butter. So it's just between you and me. No one else wants the butter? No one else wants the butter. Maybe we should just give her a taste just to see okay, if she likes Okay, it. okay, okay. But you better do this quick because she's got a fork over there and it's got it's destined I'll for my drink, hand. I'll drink you know what? that butter. I'll even wait to take my bite. I'll take <laughs> okay. it with we'll you take, do it so together. we can enjoy it together. Okay, and then after our bite, I want to hear all about your radio show sure. and where our, our viewers can listen to it. So, okay, we'll do this And together. I do I want to make it, while you guys are eating and you're going to fill your mouths because you don't want to come out going, oh, <laughs> I do want to make a comment because you have said, you did say, that one of your biggest criticisms is that people think you are trying to keep women in the home. And that is absolutely not true because, frankly, even if a man was going to be the one who was going to stay home with the children, sure. you're completely supportive of that. It's just a matter of here's an option mm -hmm. to consider for you to be able to work and be able to have the, the family situation at home. Absolutely. And I want to make certain that was Absolutely. Clear. In fact, our milk money, even though we are probably 90% women, we cater to all kinds of families. Families come in all shapes and sizes right now. I mean, really. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so we support every kind of family that there is. Mm -hmm. And our milk money really, like you said, it does provide the opportunity because we're now living in a culture where we need two incomes to survive. I mean, the right. average family across the country right now really does need that second income. So we don't really have the same choice that maybe our parents did or our parents mm -hmm. before them. Mm -hmm. And right. so this was really the way for us to say, you know what, I have to bring in this income. I don't have a choice, but I also have to be here to take care of my children. So how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it goes hand in hand with not just buying the products from, from the parents, from self-employed parents but also we operate under a set of universal rules like my family comes first and my business comes second mm. there may be interruptions when you call me because I'm a stay-at-home mom and I will not apologize for it mm. uh, I may actually have a business meeting on the playground so we're operating under these mm -hmm. rules that actually make it possible for us to have careers at home because we're working with other self-employed parents well, and something else that for for anyone that, that's watching this is thinking oh yeah that you know with younger children you know, she's she's got a point here as a as a mom of older children, I can I can tell everyone out there with younger children, you will regret every moment that you don't spend with them when they're young. I'm telling you right now, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna second that because Chris is now 20 years old, mm -hmm. and I knew from the moment that he was born that that every moment was gonna be special. Now that he's 20, now that he's off to college, mm -hmm. he's only here for summers just a little bit, but it is. You know that time is gone now, and now now it's time now it's time to be letting him go and letting him go and do his thing and hope that I've done a, you know a decent enough job as a dad for him. So you're absolutely right. Every single moment that you can spend is key. it's invaluable. It's such it's such precious time, and my kids are still very young, and so I I haven't even gone through all that, but I'm trying to foresee mm -hmm. how much I'm going to want to be at home. I never want to look back and and resent right. that time that I spent away. Right. Ali Loprete. Yeah. See, you got to do it. See, do it. Try it. Loprete. Say her name. Loprete. <laughs> you got you to roll the R a little bit, right? Loprete. Loprete. My husband right. would be proud. The Thank American you. version is just Loprete. But yeah, Loprete is more fun. Especially Absolutely. Loprete, especially at a French restaurant owned by a Spaniard. Right? <laughs> That's where we are. And it is. We have been at Le Chien Restaurant. Juan, Alonso, Claudia. Thank you very much for being here and, and being our, our host today. Thank you very much, Allie, Thank very you. much. Thank you, everyone from College Bound Strategies. Uh, Ed Bernstein from uh, 25 Scores on the program today as well. This has been a real treat, Tammy Edwards. It's fun, and, and I'm going to make sure Jason brings me here for a romantic night. Yeah, you can check that one off that list, can't you? Yes, that, that, that should have been on the list, Dinner at Le Chien. Dinner at Le Chien is number one. A romantic dinner is number one, but it should be Prunsi's Dinner at Le Chien. So we're going to always remember that. Thank you very much for being with us, everybody. We do hope you have a great day.